Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepezani. Here are your top stories this Friday. The Zimbabwean Finance Minister Tendai Biti announced yesterday a rise in the tax on alcohol and cigarettes as part of his 2013 budget. The changes come into effect from the 1st of December. Alcohol will be subject to a rise of 5%, while the tax on cigarettes will rise from 10 US dollars per hundred sticks to 15 US dollars. Minister Beatty said he hoped to raise $11 million from the sin tax, which will all go towards the education budget. In Lusaka, Zambia, the body of an identified woman has been pulled out from the Nyangwenya Dam in the high-density suburb of Chawama. The body was discovered by passers-by at around 5 a.m. with multiple injuries and broken legs. The following report comes from our friends at Movi TV in Lusaka. We should warn you that the report contains some disturbing images of the deceased woman. This Nangwenya Chawama Dam has got a history of being used for a number of criminal motives. This body lying here of an unidentified woman in her mid-twenties has been found dumped along the same dam. The body was found with multiple body injuries and these residents suspect the victim could have been raped before being dumped here. <laughs> So munga kwenze mukangano na maboyfriends vaki. E, so mani ndeku ambo mmenya, ndeku pese kati hafu. Ndeku mtaira manje muti, mumanzi mwja. Sana mtaira mumanzi ya tungena maningi, wa mtaira kuche kumba. Kumbali. Kungwenya kwa chita oba. Wanamba ni kudala kukambaza kutatitila kule tani polisi posti, shiti uoneka. Vati wantu every day mama peseka chintaku. So day it is amba kungwa tenga chape vitumbi. Vati uza tuwazati kila kwa mawaya. Vazati chingiriza polisi shiti uoneka. So, kuno chametu wenzo pempa nchakuti. Asembe vatu pasako olo ka polisi posti kuno. At least vatu chingirira. Maone. The cry for a police post here in Ngwenya and the mushrooming of night taverns is one thing that has been pronounced louder. Anthony Chomba, Movie TV News in Lusaka. In other Zambian news, 83 male inmates in Lusaka Central Prison are sharing a cell with only four single beds. The number is still less than the 120 inmates that were occupying the same cell last year. We can again cross to Movie TV to tell us more. These more than 800 inmates at Lusaka Central Prison squeeze in less than 30 cells whose space can only accommodate four single beds. In this particular cell, 83 male inmates occupy it. How it is done is something hard to tell whether they spend nights standing, squatting or sitting. One can only understand when they get to be in their position. For them, they have to live life as it is. While congested in this manner, they have to share one toilet, which is placed right inside the cell. For the female folk, though congested, the situation is better as compared to that of the male folk. Prisons Commissioner Pacey Chato knows that congestion in prisons is a big challenge. The challenges we are facing is, in a, is the very high rate of congestion, inadequate number of beddings, as well as... Uh, lack of academic materials, others are insufficient medicated soap. For those who have been in prison before, forgetting the experience is not easy. Reverend Paul Colley, an international board director of the Prisons Fellowship and a representative of a Christian organization called Alpha, says he has been in prison before and that he cannot forget those two in jail. Reverend Colley took time to help address the problems inmates face by donating blankets, mattresses, a stove, and sewing machines to the Saka Central Prison. So I haven't been in a prison like this. And I pray for you every day. But I have been in prison as a young man. I took your request back to my church in England. And I spoke to some people on your behalf. And they have paid for this equipment that you have now. For the government, such gestures are welcome. The government appreciates the long-term relationship which exists between Alpha and the prison services by equipping the prison's chaplains with skills and knowledge through the Alpha course and in turn transforming prisoners' lives. The issue of congestion in prisons 
has been preached about for a long time now. But the situation continues as many still engage in criminality, adding up to those in custody, waiting for their cases to be concluded, as well as those that have already been convicted. Mwape Kumwenda, Movie TV News, Lusaka. A feud between two Zimbabwe musicians, Stana and Maskeri, turned sour this week when Maskeri described Stana as stupid. Maskeri said Stana is misguided when he claimed to have upper hand in music because he had staged shows overseas. Stana had earlier bragged on Twitter that he could never be beaten by a person who's never performed overseas. Maskeri will next month travel overseas for his first UK title album, Zimbabwean Urban Grooves, UK Takeover. It's not just up and coming musicians that we celebrate on ATV. We also recognize the achievements of people that have been in the music industry for a long time. We caught up with international Mbira star Stella Chueshe. For 40 years, I think more than 40 years, I've been playing Mbira. Well, uh, but I started to to ring in my head. So it was so loud that uh, I had to uh, make trips to go to those who played Mbira because where I grew up there was no one who was playing Mbira. So Mbira was played one day at a ceremony uh, in my family's home. So after two years, the very Mbira that was played uh, the, uh, uh, two years uh, ago, started to, I, I started to hear the Mbira. It was so much that w when it started, I also started to feel pain in my chest and I could visualize the where the pain was coming from. It was like a, a burning a ball, you, you know, a, a ball a, as big as a, a, a golf ball. And so it was, it was really hurting. And I knew that the remedy would be to play beer. Uh, these days, it's, it's really easy. You, you can go to the market, you can find beer uh, from every corner, but it, it was not like that. Uh, you had to, one had to go to a beer maker to ask for him to make a beer. So that I made uh, many beer makers angry because they were asking me, what do you think I am to make beer for a woman? And so to find a teacher was also not easy if it wasn't of my mother's uncle who taught me. So this is how I, I learned beer. And today I, I felt so much honored uh, to be uh, amongst people who were uh, being given awards so uh, I also got an award uh, for this beer play, you know. Remember that uh, beer or even singing or dancing is not for competition. We don't uh, uh, compete when we are uh, learning to do things. We, we do it for the pleasure of ourselves and for the healings of ourselves. So keep on. Now, it's that time of the week. Liam and Michael are here to discuss another round of English Premier League fixtures. Thank you, Charity. And you're right, it is that time of week again. We're looking ahead to another round of weekend games in the Premiership. Last weekend was full of drama, late comebacks, goals galore. We can only hope for more of the same across Saturday and Sunday. The first game we're going to have a little look at is the champions, Manchester City. They got back to winning ways last week with a 2-1 win over Tottenham Hotspur. Edin Dzeko again coming to the rescue of City. And what about Aston Villa? You have to feel really sorry for them 
after last week's game against Manchester United. They were 2-0 up, the young players playing really well, but as they do so often, Manchester United came back to win 3-2, with all three goals coming from Chicharito Javier Hernandez. This should be a fairly straightforward game for City. They are fairly formidable at home, and Villa aren't particularly good on their travels. Personally, I think the Sky Blue City team will probably win this one, maybe 3-1. Michael, City at home, is it a home banker? Well, City at home have proved to be quite a team to beat, and uh, I'm looking at 2-1 to City. Is it going to be Edin Dzeko coming off the bench again? Well, if he does come off the bench, he's definitely one of the players who are most likely going to score. And we've got to talk about Villa last weekend. They were very unlucky. They played well against United. Will that have hurt them to lose that game in that fashion? Uh, not really. It's more or less likely going to inspire them to do more. If they put in the same performance they put in against United, then City are going to have a tough time. OK. City currently two points behind Manchester United in the table and United kick off later. So if they win, they'll temporarily go top of the league. The next game we're going to look at is the European champions Chelsea, who are travelling to high-flying West Bromwich Albion. I mean, West Brom sitting at fifth in the league. It's, it's remarkable stuff, really. And they won again last week against Wigan. Chelsea have slumped a little bit. And an interesting stat here, they've only taken two points from their last possible nine. Now, I'm not going to say they're in crisis, but they've, they've struggled for results recently, Chelsea. Not struggled for results. Other teams are playing well. Okay. And uh, considering Chelsea were not even in the Champions League spot for last season, they are playing pretty well. People seem to forget because it's that calibre of team that you expect them to always perform. We've got to talk about West Brom. They're having a formidable season, aren't they? Fifth place. No, no one could have expected that. Well, no one definitely could have expected them to be in such a position. And uh, we hope to see, the, see them maintain the form they're in at the moment. If they do maintain the form, which we've no reason to believe they won't, I'm going to go for a one-all draw because they are a stubborn side when they play at home. Michael, do you think they can hold Chelsea? Definitely. I'm going for a one-all draw as well. OK, so we both think it's going to be a one-all draw which will see Chelsea lose further ground in the title race. And what about the table toppers themselves? We've discussed how Manchester United had to come back in thrilling fashion away at Aston Villa last week. They were 2-0 down and they won 3-2. And that seems to have been the case a lot this season. They give teams a head start, but they do crawl it back in the way that only Manchester United seem to be able to do. Those results have led them to the top of the table, and most footballing pundits would agree this should be a fairly straightforward victory for the Red Devils. Norwich sit down in 15th and have not had a good season so far. We expect Manchester United to have a bit of an easier day at the office against Norwich. I'm going to go for a 3-1 to United. No dramatic comebacks. What about yourself? I'm going for a win with a bigger margin, probably 4 or 5 nil. It's, it's high time United put in many goals and Norwich seem to be a team that's going to bear the brunt of that. They don't look particularly good in defence and would you say with Van Persie, Hernandez, Rooney, Welbeck, United have got the best strike options? Yeah, United do have the best strike options but it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see if Ferguson rests some of the key players as well. That will determine the margin of win. Is he going to go out with a team that's going to thoroughly dominate Norwich and win the game comfortably or is he going to give the fringe players a, a chance to play as well? It's interesting you say that because several teams will be looking ahead to the Champions League as the game's hot up but United are already qualified so he can play whoever he wants really, can't he? Yes, he can, but uh, knowing Ferguson, he's got a trick or two up his sleeve. He certainly has. Me and Mambo both see this one as a straightforward win for the Red Devils. What about the game of the week? As I say, there's always a big clash in the Premier League these days, and they don't come much bigger than the North London derby, one of the hottest, hottest contested games in the Premiership. For the fans, it's the big one, isn't it? North London derby. Well, it's, it's the big one for the Arsenal and the Tottenham fans, but if you're a United fan, if you're a Chelsea fan, then uh, this is just one of those other matches. I heard Andre Villas-Boas talking this week and just saying that the whole place is buzzing for Spurs to beat Arsenal. It's all they really want, isn't it? Yes, it is, and uh, it's, it seems it's going to be one of those matches that Arsenal may lose depending on which key players are back or not. If, if they have the first 11 then Arsenal will certainly win but Spurs have got 
very good players as well. You've got Gareth Bell, you've got Lennon on his day. He Defoe played really well. Defoe, uh, you have uh, the ex-Arsenal player, Adebayo. Mm, he could come back to haunt his former side. He seems to always save his best for when he's playing against Arsenal. It's a tough one to call, really, because both sides haven't been on the best form recently. Spurs have lost their last two games in the league, and of course Arsenal were easily beaten by Man United and then held to that shock 3 or draw against Fulham. Do you think there'll be goals in this game? There will definitely be goals in this game, loads of them. Uh, each each defence is not as solid as they're normally accustomed to being, and it, we'll have to see which team scores the most goals. So it's who's going to outscore the other? Should yes, be, who's, who's going to outscore the other? I'm going to sit on the fence with this one, but I agree with Michael that there'll be goals. I'm going to say 2 all. What about yourself? I was going to go for 2 all as well. I think you've just seen my sheet beforehand. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. That's what me and Michael think, but we always want to know what you, the ATV viewers, think of this. I'm pleased to say we've got John V on the line, who is an Arsenal fan based in South Africa, but originally from Zimbabwe. So, John, are you confident of an Arsenal win? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm 100% confident. I'm, uh, because of, uh, you know, for the last four games, Arsenal have been playing uh, otherwise. Like, uh, and Tottenham, too, now this season, uh, they are not performing like compared to other seasons. They've been lost. The, they lost their best player. Modric, and uh, I don't think they will win this one against Arsena. Now, John, my colleague, Mr Mambo, has talked a little bit about losing faith in his beloved Gunners. Have you got a message for him? No, 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 you, you mustn't give up. Arsena, if you check, man, last season, during this time, Arsena was at the bottom of the league. Remember, my man, football is all about commandment. You should be a true fan. Don't no matter we, we we finish one season at the bottom of the league, it doesn't mean that's the end of us now. So you heard that you've got to keep faith with the Gunners. What do you what do you say to that? Yeah, uh, thank you for that, John. I, I I have lots of faith in my team, but at the same time, every team needs change. It, it's high time there was a change in the direction that they're going, and that's all I'm advocating for. It doesn't mean I hate my team. It just means probably it's high time we've got another man to be in charge. Interesting stuff. We're going to finish tonight by just having a little look at the Barclays Premier League table. As I said, Manchester United still sitting pretty on top, but if City win their game, which is earlier in the day, they will leapfrog United into first place until United play Norwich later in the day. Chelsea still, still in third place. We think that they maybe could lose some ground, don't we, on, on the, t the two Manchester sides? Yes, they will. What about Everton? Do you think they're going to, they could possibly catch Chelsea in third place? Definitely not. I don't see Everton being able to catch Chelsea there. And interestingly, our game of the week, Spurs and Arsenal right next to each other, just one point in it. Be honest now, are Arsenal going to be there <laughs> by this time Monday? By this time Monday, it's still going to be the same with no change on those positions. OK, well, you heard it here first. That's our view at ATV. Keep sending us your predictions for this weekend's action and we'll catch up with you on Monday. And the final photo of the day for this week has been awarded to Shepard Shuarira, who is clearly relaxing this weekend. Send us your pictures if you want to feature on Monday's show. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.